So this week we're going over American Index of a Hidden and Unfamiliar. A big Terrence Simon work, very important. Um, thanks for coming to watch the channel and I hope you enjoy. As you can see, this is a very um, uh, banal kind of ordinary looking book. It looks like an index if you're a researcher or you worked in a library or anything like that. This looks like very plain and um, almost like a facsimile. Um, but I remember the first time I came across Taryn Simon's work, it was um, uh, The Innocence Project and she was photographing, um, I think primarily men who were exonerated from death row, um, proven innocent by DNA evidence. Um, she's a very smart artist. I think she is making heady work in the best kind of way um and the first artist the first photographer that i saw um who allowed research to play a big role in their um artistic practice but without any more preamble um let's get into it um so very kind of plain looking book um by design there's a great foreword in this book by salman rushdie um that's great to read um but the format or the layout of this book, let's get to the pictures. Um, here we go, right here. An American Index of the Hidden and Unfamiliar. The layout of this book is indexical. And what I mean by that is it is communicating information in a very simple way. And you might know that indexes are for pointing, pointing you in the direction of more information. And so you would go to an index to find out um, where to find a certain article on a certain subject. Um, so instead of having publication that's a thousand pages, you would have an index that is a hundred pages and it points you to the books that you need instead of including everything in one. Um, so what we're looking at here is a good template for the way the whole book is. Um, a photograph, with um, a substantial text block below it. Um, now would be a good time to talk about the motivation for this project. Um, Taryn Simon's uh, an American uh, index of the hidden and unfamiliar. Um, she is photographing things that usually are hidden or go unnoticed, either intentionally by the powers that be, just because they might be seen as inconsequential. And so there's this great contrast between, and Salman Rushdie mentions this in the introduction, a great contrast between the plainness in which she photographs something and the directness of which she photographs something that we might never see or never know about. Um, so let's take it from the top. And I'll discuss a few um, images. This is a great one here. Um, nuclear, the title of this image is Nuclear Waste Encapsulation and Storage Facility, Chernikov Radiation, Hanford Site, U.S. Department of Energy, Southeastern Washington. What you're looking at here, um, it kind of looks like a light bright, if anyone is familiar with those from back in the 80s and 90s. Um, you are looking down at nuclear waste um, capsules that are submerged underwater and they're glowing because they're radiating so much. Um, and they're uh, submerged in water. Um, so obviously this is a very secret and um, important site. Not one, especially if you've ever tried to photograph government sites before, you notice how quick the G-men are to show up in the SUV. A lot of Taryn Simon's practices is getting permissions for these photographs and writing letters. Um, she says most of her practice is writing. But you're looking downward on these nuclear radiation waste or uh, capsules that are submerged in water because if, if you were to get this close to them without the protection of the water, you would die in a few seconds. That's how... Uh, toxic and radioactive they are. 
why I want to start out with this picture is because um, some people aren't sold on big text blocks or big titles that go with photographs. And this is a great example of a photograph that is allowed to be so abstract and ambiguous that it's interesting. So the ambiguity and the lack of direction from the photograph only serves to make it more interesting. And the text below it um, illuminates what the photograph's about. I talk about this a lot in my lectures that text allows for the artist to be direct and um, it also allows for the artist to not put so much burden on the photograph. The photograph can be as expressive and abstract as the artist needs it to be, and they can let the text carry the explanative weight. This, I can't think of a more kind of mysterious and haunting way to photograph these radioactive capsules. Terrence Simon even goes to point out that the shape of these capsules is roughly in the shape of the continental United States. So it'd be like Texas and Washington State and California. Florida's not there, which is sad, but um, the New England and Maine up there and the Great Lakes. Um, but I, I love how this photo book starts with uh, this pairing because it is a great indication of how photographs and text can unite to heighten each other's strengths the clarity of text, and the in interpretiveness of photographs. This is the Avian Quarantine Facility, the New York Animal Import Center, and a big explanative paragraph right there. And you kind of see the template here. It's very quiet, um, and it's very repetitious. The, you know, the form and the style kind of goes away in service of the images. The images are what changes. Um, and you're not distracted by any form or context. Um, this image is a great example for the project too because it talks about things that are maybe hidden or unfamiliar from the larger public. So this uh, title is Hymenoplasty, Cosmetic Surgery, Pennsylvania, Fort Lauderdale, or I'm sorry, Cosmetic Surgery, PA, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And so this um, Terrence Simon talks about how this patient is 21 years old. She's from she, Palestinian descent, living in the US, and she came here to have uh, hymen reconstruction surgery because when she is to be married and um, on her wedding night, um, expected to have the hymen broken. And so um, even though that's not always natural um, in a lot of cases, and. Uh, she has to travel to the U.S. to have this surgery. It's amazing that Terrence Simon photographed these kind of very personal and um, culturally sensitive subject matter in such a in such a way that it is not confrontational. Um, but you clearly know what's going on here. Um, something maybe unsettling or private. The way that she's able to gain trust and access um, educates the public. It's not exploiting anyone. Um, but it, it's, it kind of uh, pulls things out of the shadows so people can know what's going on. Um, this is a uh, Bureau of Engraving and Printing, U.S. Department of the Treasury. So what you're seeing here are stacks of money. And what serves um, so well this project is how boring she makes some of these uh, facilities look. They're not boring pictures, but... You can see that some of the uh, bureaucratic structures of any government or large institution, it's not, um, uh, there's no uh, fiendish men in the basement uh, curling their mustaches um, diabol diabolically. There's cash on pallets and a crappy cheap wall fan and a crappy cheap clock on the wall with millions and millions of dollars on pallets. This is a Braille uh, Playboy magazine, and so the, the Library of Congress has a service for the blind and physically handicapped, and they translate periodicals into Braille. And so what you see here is a distillation of a Playboy magazine. There's no photographs to look at, all you have is text, and it's translated to Braille. Kind of a, a really great irony here. This is um, 
spokesman Rabbi Israel David Weiss and Netaru Karta, spiritual leader, Rabbi. Um, they are the, the title for this image is Orthodox Jews um, United Against Zionism, Monsi, New York. And so um, a lot of Terrence Simon's photographs kind of challenge how we view groups, um, which is, or it, and it also nuances them. And so these are Orthodox uh, Jewish rabbis who are, in fact, against Zionism and a nationalistic view of uh, Judaism, taking Judaism out of the spiritual realm and into the, the politic, the political. Um, there, there's just so many great photographs here. Oh, serendipity arrived me here. This is one of my favorite photographs, maybe ever. Transatlantic submar submarine cables reaching land, International Avon, New Jersey. So, what you're seeing here are fiber optic cables coming up out of the ground in New Jersey that have stretched all the way across the North Atlantic Ocean from Europe. These are fiber optic cables that are underwater and go underground. And this is a great um, paragraph that explains it. Another great example of how when you pull back the curtain on some of the, the issues and institutions that impact us the most, there are actually very uh, boring, but now bureaucratic spaces that they're in. Um, notice here, these precious fiber optic cables connecting two continents are guarded just by some bent aluminum and steel. Fascinating. I think one of the things why I like, I, I love and appreciate this book so much is because it is an index in that it points to other uh, things that can be further investigated. And that's exactly what an index is, this conceptual idea of an index full of these very interesting photos is you can look at these cryonic, these photographs of uh, cry the Cryonics Institute, and you can love and enjoy and be kind of triggered by these to learn more. And these, this book and indeed these photographs point outside of themselves to a, a interesting and fascinating world with more discoveries. And I think, speaking from a personal perspective, that's one of my philosophies in photography is, is pointing to an interesting world that's worth investigating on your own. And so it's Taryn Simon's um, photographs do that so well. Each one of these photographs could lead to their own projects that would be fascinating. But here we have an index that points you in the direction of these. In fact, some of these photographs would later become larger bodies of work for Taryn Simon. So here we have a photograph that Salman Rushdie talks about, uh, hibernating black bear and cubs, bear den in West Virginia. She went into a bear's den that was hibernating to make a picture. It's wild. Live HIV, HIV Research Laboratory, Harvard Medical School, Boston, Massachusetts. Imperial Office of the World Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, Sharpsburg, Maryland. So she was able to uh, convince these, these men to let her make a photograph of them. Fascinating. Um, just so, this will be the last image I talk about. There's so, there's so many things to talk about in here. Um, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Contraband Room, John F. Kennedy International Airport. So, uh, Taryn Simon made this photograph in the area of the airport where uh, Customs would put contraband that wasn't allowed into the states. So it would sit here and you see all these fruits and plants and things like that. They were caught at the border. Um, this actually spins off into a whole exhibition and book um, of Terrence Simons called um, Contraband. And it's a, it's a book that has a, a very communicative layout uh, system, which some people call a taxonomy, um, a system of working, and repetitious photographs that photograph all these wild things that people try to sneak into the country. Um, and she photographs them as contraband, and she stays up for several days in the airport at JFK photographing 
as much as she can. Very laborious, very hardworking, a hero of photography. So I'll kind of wrap up here. This book actually came from an exhibition she had at the Whitney Museum of Art in 2007. And that is um, the same story for a lot of photo books. Photo books come from an exhibition and they're a way to um, preserve an exhibition. But in the best of cases, they take on a life of their own. Look at her work, um, look at the book, um, but it's an amazing, amazing, influential book that's worth your time. Um, thanks for listening.